Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> oh, good evening, everybody. So happy to have you tune in for this worthy cause of this great theater. Can you see it in the background here? 
Right there is where you should be sitting, right back there. Uh, but during these times, this is probably the best we can do. It's a beautiful theater. We've just had quite a lot of renovation. When we finally get going again, you're going to be amazed when you get in here. So uh, we're uh, real happy to be here with you. And uh, um, I, I did want to tell you about my neighbor. Um, let me find the right page here first. Ah, here we go. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, my neighbor, a barber, he just got arrested for selling drugs. Um, we'd been his customer for eight years. We had no idea he was a barber. Come on. Who was better than that? That's my best one. That's your best one. Yeah. Uh, I think we better get back to some music. Here's... Uh, Here's one by W.C. Handy, who also wrote the St. Louis Blues, and he wrote this one in 1923. It's called the Atlanta Blues. First one. First one. Bum, 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 bum. One, a two, a one, two. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you very much. We don't have a big audience here, but they're enthusiastic. We pay them for that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I wanted to tell you about this man who came to my door and wanted to sell me a coffin today. I told him that's the last thing I'd never need. <laughs> Look at it this way, folks. You got in for free. <laughs> uh, uh, I lived in a houseboat for a while, and I started seeing the girl next door, but eventually we drifted apart. Okay, I'm getting a look from these guys. I think we better move on. Roger thinks he waked up. That's not good English, Roger. Well, we're going to do a tune now by a guy that's written some great jazz tunes. And um, he wrote this one. His name is Fat Swaller. You may have heard of him. And Andy Razoff is also a guy he's written with. And this, that's not very good English either. I ended with a preposition. Oh, well. It's better than ending with the wrong note. So he wrote this one in 1929, which if you look through all the music of the 20s and 30s, man, that was a year of really good traditional jazz. And this one is an exception. <laughs> no, this is no exception. This is blue turning gray over you, and uh, Roger, would you uh, grace us with a little vocal on this at some point? I'll try. Okay. First, just once. First tender kiss and the wonderful things that we would do now I run my hands through these silvery strands you left me blue turning gray over you well you used to be so good to me but that when I was a novelty now you say you've got some new friends in view cause you've found somebody new and you left me blue turning gray over you
surprise. <laughs> we uh, kind of snuck that one in on Noah. Good job, Noah. I don't care what they're saying. Uh, do you know how to fix a broken brass instrument? Would you like to know? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> I would love to know. You use tuba glue. Uh, I know that was a groaner. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, La Diana, why don't you come join us here and try to stop these corny jokes if you possibly can. Diana's going to sing one here that uh, she doesn't sing to me anymore. Uh, the title is Baby Face. Now, if any of you uh, Nighthawks are listening out there, we really need you to play those fills. Just sing them to yourself. We'll, we'll imagine them here. They know what I'm talking about, and you folks have no idea, right? Well, you'll see. <laughs> Well, I can tell you, I'm going to miss Glenn and Gordon on this one. So yeah, do, we, if you're we have there. a great arrangement with two trombones and a clarinet. We play in Florida on this tune, and uh, the trombones have some great fills, which we're not going to hear tonight. Maybe a little from me. Here's Babyface. Oh, we should mention, written by Harry Angst. I don't know if that name means what anything. What a name. And Benny Davis, 1926. So he was three, three years short of the best time of trad jazz, but it's a pretty good little tune. Now let's not do the verse. No, okay, no verse. Couldn't get no verse. Couldn't get no voice in that. Thank you, Danny. One, two, one.
this jumping You sure have started something, baby face I'm up in heaven when I'm in your fond embrace I didn't need a show cause I just fell in love With your pretty baby, pretty baby, pretty baby The applause was a little lower that time because Diana was back here instead of back here applauding. Applauding? Is that a word? I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> Do you know the <clears throat> three most difficult years in a clarinet player's life? The second grade. Now, I like this one, but I seem to be the only one, but I, I like it because us clarinet players and us saxophone players have kind of a um, love-hate relationship. So, and you know, the, the saxophone was invented by, uh, yeah. Why did Adolf Sax, Sax invent the saxophone? Well, he hated mankind, but he couldn't build an atom bomb. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. I'm not, see, there's two of us that like it. Here's a definition. What is a metronome? Elf that lives in the city. That's right, a city-dwelling dwarf. Hey. Very good, Roger. All right. All right, just because of that, Oops. let's move right into a tune I sing. <laughs> That'd be the last one in the book. And here's the tune that uh, people in the COVID uh, pandemic often have to ask. The title is, Whenever You're Lonesome, Just Telephone Me. And boy, we've been doing that. Here we go. Pete Wendling, 1922. I have a hole over it. So do you. 1920. Just telephone me when you're all on your own song and you want company. When the blues overtake you, I'll never forsake you. You know that your sweetheart is waiting here for you. Yes, I am wherever you are, from Frisco to Maine. I'm miles to see your sweet smile again your kisses and your laughter whoa yeah are worth running after so if ever you're lonesome you just telephone me here comes roger on the guitar Thank you. 
Every lonesome, just telephone me when you're on your own, some and you want company. When the blues overtake you, I'll never forsake you. You know that your sweetheart is waiting here for you. Yes, you, wherever you are. From Frisco to Maine, I'd walk a million miles to see your sweet smile again. Yeah, your kisses and your laughter, oh yeah, are worth running after. So whenever you're lonesome, just telephone me. Yes, whenever you're lonesome, you just telephone me. Good job, guys. <laughs> we had an ending on the fly there, as it were. <laughs> Noah, you did, didn't miss one wrong note. He did. What are we up to? Oh, well, we're up to uh, two Sidney Bechet tunes to finish off here with. A slow one and a fast one. Now, who was Sidney Bechet? Well, he was a clarinet and, yes, a soprano sax player. And he's probably better known as a soprano sax player, but I know him better as a clarinet player. He was born and uh, raised in New Orleans, played this kind of music, wrote a lot of good music. This is two of them. Uh, he did move to France eventually, lived out the last uh, 20 years of his life in France. Wrote some great tunes over there. And here's one he wrote in 1941. It's kind of a laid back little tune called Georgia Cabin. Just need a little drink.
Time for one or two more. Okay, let's let's do uh, number one hundred and sixteen, my old Kentucky home. Thought we were running a little short, so obviously we don't have enough jokes. Is the problem no, right? Yeah, 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 probably not enough jokes. Let me see. Yeah, I, I will introduce the band one more time. That's a joke, yeah. Now, DeKalb resident right here, Roger Hinchy. 
NIU Graduate School of Music, Jazz Studies, um, Masters in Jazz Performance. Just regular masters, yeah. And uh, he plays the bass. That's when I first knew him. That was your major, right? It was one of my instruments. Yeah, and then the guitar, which I like. He plays the banjo. He plays house. <laughs> yeah. what, what else do you play? Grad, uh, dad and granddad. Dad and granddad, okay. Yeah. Enough of that, okay. Yeah, now, moving down a couple of centuries back in age, <laughs> we have Noah Brooks on the drums, and uh, Noah is a DeKalb resident as well, NIU Sc School of Music student, currently taking physics as well, don't know why, <laughs> and at this point neither does he, <laughs> and uh, we're really happy to have him. He's been playing with us a couple of years on and off here and there, this band or that band, and now the very foundation of the band the bass saxophone player, Mr. Aaron Butler. And Aaron uh, has a degree, in nothing. a degree in nothing, but he owns a 2,800 acre organic farm here near DeKalb. And uh, I don't know how he keeps all those machines running. There's so many buildings on his property, he has to number them. Uh, and on Friday nights uh, when we, uh, broadcast on the internet just ourselves. We broadcast from his farm shop. So things behind look kind of uh, um, weird. People often wonder why all that junk behind us. And uh, our vocalist, Diana Skillman. Where are you, Diana? Uh, Diana, uh, her specialty really is choral singing and she's coming into this jazz kicking and screaming, but she's doing a great job. <laughs> Thank you, Diana. My name is John Skillman. I am a clarinet player. Um, I did the arrangements that we're doing tonight, and uh, my degree is in electronic engineering <laughs> from uh, a few years ago, one from the University of Michigan and a master's from uh, University of Maryland. Okay, enough of that. So we go back to the music, and we do one Stephen Foster tune. This is our oldest tune in our book, from 1853. This is the Kentucky State Song. I bet you didn't know that. Since 1928 it is, and it's called My Old Kentucky Home. Not normally a jazz tune, but we're not gonna let that stop us, okay. Bum, 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 bum. One, a two, one.
shines bright on my old Kentucky home. Tis summer and the skies are gray. The corn tops ripe and the meadows all in bloom. While the birdies music all the day. Oh, weep no more, my lady. Oh, weep, weep no more, I say. We will sing one song for the old Kentucky home, for the old Kentucky home that's far away. I got it. throwing a few new ones at you tonight. Well, to us anyway. We've never played that one together. Not sure we were together that time. Well, folks, we got time for one more tune. And uh, as I said, it's going to be another Sidney Bechet tune. Almost near the back of the book. Uh, this is one called Viper Mad. Now, some people think it's about a snake. But back in 1938, when Sidney wrote this, uh, Viper Mad was somebody who smoked a lot of bad things. <laughs> yeah, so that's what the tune's named at it. But um, now Sally Elliott wrote some decent tune words to it, but I don't seem to have them. You folks are spared. We're just going to play it. Here's Viper Mad. Yeah, let's do the verse once at the beginning. Oh, this is all up tempo. Dun, 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 dun. One, two, a oh, one, two, three. <laughs> Thank you. 
you all enjoyed that as much as we do every I think every week I'm like I'm dancing while we're doing camera work and I feel that's the best way to do camera work so that was the new normal jazz band and I don't know if you had the same Pavlovian response to go and buy Portillo's because when you hear that clarinet I don't know that's Pavlovian they do right it just I'm craving a hot dog anyway <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. This has been the fourth week of Hashtag 815 Live. We are back next week with the DeKalb Brass Quintet. So join us there. They're doing a very special birthday celebration because it's 2020 and no one gets to have birthday parties. So tune in. Celebrate your birthday. Uh, but we are so happy again to the Farney R. Wurlitzer Foundation, again, who all these musicians you're seeing on stage are receiving a stipend. And you can help support local music today. You can donate by text by texting 815LIVE to 44321. Or if you're like, I'd rather not text, I want to donate on my computer, we got you covered there too. Go to 815LIVE.org and you can make those donations there. Again, you're supporting us, a 501c3 nonprofit, which in turn gets to help support these great local musicians because as we've said before, it's not just the stages that are empty, it's all of the great musicians and artists that are looking for an outlet to play. So thank you for tuning in. I'm signing off for uh, this week, and we'll see you next week at 6 p.m. on Thursday for 815 Live. Have a great night. <laughs>